Booth in the back if you're interested. Thank you. I'm just happy to be here. Welcome. <coughs> uh, let's, uh, um, so Devin Rich is our chair, but he's moving. Uh, and then um, Todd Hadley is our vice chair. Expect him to get here soon, but uh, um, usually, typically, the meetings are run by our chair and or vice chair, but since they're not here, I'll go ahead and, and get started. So uh, I think it would be good for us to go around and uh, introduce ourselves, give us, tell us uh, uh, name and uh, what you do and why you're interested in, in joining the Public Works Advisory Commission. We've got four new members that are joining us today, so if you think you're the new guy, uh, if, you think, if you think you're the only new guy, it's not the case. So um, I'll start. Uh, my name is Reed Price. I am the Assistant Public Works Director. Uh, my responsibilities are primarily uh, with uh, the city's water resources, so with the drinking water side, the wastewater side, and also the stormwater side. I manage all of those, <coughs> all of those sections. About 70 uh, full-time employees total. Um, uh, Chris Shirky, who's the director, he'll be here just shortly. Um, uh, he'll, he'll introduce himself. We have another division, the Public Services Division. Uh, the Public Services Division uh, manages the city's streets and sidewalks, as well as the city's fleet, the parks, the cemetery, and also the city's traffic operations. Uh, so Public Works, we're, our main focus is maintaining the assets that the city has, make sure that they're functioning well uh, and uh, when things are functioning well, no one realizes it. We, we sometimes feel we don't get the credit we deserve, but that's a good thing because nobody knows what we're doing. Here's Chris. Good morning, Chris. Uh, Chris, I was just, uh, we're, we're going through introductions. I just introduced myself, explained my responsibilities as, all, as well as uh, the uh, responsibilities that, that Tyler has as a public services in public services and was explaining that when public works does their job well nobody realizes it and, and uh, that's our, that's our goal so anyway we'll, we'll go around the room this way and I'll allow you all to introduce yourself so my name is Giles Demke I'm the water reclamation section manager um, been here five years as of yesterday yesterday Chris Shirky <laughs> Public Works Director, apologize for my tardiness. Operator error on my alarm this morning. <laughs> um, I've been here since uh, 1994, and uh, it's a pleasure working with all of you that I know, and I look forward to getting to know the four new chairs, so, or the four new uh, committee members. So welcome to, uh, to the Public Works Advisory Commission. Casey Shaw. I'm the Deputy General Manager, Central Utah Water Conservancy District. And, uh, I've been on the on this commission since what 2014, Chris? Since it was started in 14, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're one of the reasons we got rid of term limits, Casey. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I would just note uh, the uh, expansion <coughs> of this wastewater treatment plant was the first job I had when I got out of school. I was a resident engineer when they went from trickling filters to the oxidation ditch. So this place has a fond spot in my heart. <laughs> I'm Jim Michaelis. I'm retired. I used to be associate VP at uh, UVU for facilities and construction and all that. So I've retired a few years now. I was on this committee when it first started and took a break and back again. So. I'm Robert Moore. Uh, I'm the Civil Division Chief of the Utah County Attorney's Office. Uh, I've been making there 22 years, work at Public Works, the county, uh, a lot of their projects. Uh, I started doing a lot of things at uh, North County Boulevard, for example, the project I did. Um, I acquired Bridalbelt Falls for the county. Uh, just done a lot of different projects over the years for the county. And, uh, Public Works love me and hate me. I mean, they love me because I keep my trouble, they hate me because I'm making <laughs> so, kind of my experience. Do you go by Robert? <coughs> yeah, Robert or Rob. Okay. Anyway. I'm Gary Morty. Uh, I'm retired. I'm a long time 
user of all the public services. <laughs> I uh, did foot and ankle surgery for 43 years, and uh, we uh, built our home and uh, been here since about 69. And uh, just appreciate the opportunity to know a little more about the works and uh, perhaps contribute. I'm April Nelson. I'm the one who sent you all the emails. Um, I'm the secretary for the water section and the secretary for the public works advisory commission. I'm Joe Gordon. I'm new. Um, I don't know what you want me to tell you. I work across the road at the Utah National Guard, the armory in the back there at UVU. Uh, I worked there 22 years. I enjoy public service. I have a master's degree in public administration. I really wanted to see what this was all about, see if I can contribute. Uh, my name is Brent Toller, um, long time more resident. I decided it was time that I get involved in my community and do something. Um, so I actually applied for a couple of different commissions. I uh, ended up on this one, which I'm very happy about because actually my uh, I've worked in the water industry for the last 20 plus years. It's on the equipment supplier side. So. Are you a civil engineer? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. And then, what was your background again? You, you, you're, at, you're at the armory. Mine is mostly linguistic. Uh, my undergrad was Spanish translation and then MPA at the last. I worked for them for law enforcement. Okay. Great. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, one of the first orders of business is <coughs> that we need to elect a new chair. And uh, Casey served as a chair many years ago on this, so I think, uh, I think he served his time. And then uh, yes. Jim. <laughs> um, Jim's been with us for some time, and, and as well as Todd, who's not present today. Todd is our vice chair. Devin Rich is our chair. Devin Rich uh, is moving, or in the process of moving to Arizona and needed to resign from uh, from this commission. And uh, I know that y'all don't know each other very well, but, uh, um, and I can't make a recommendation necessarily as a, as a committee member, so maybe uh, maybe these two could yes. talk a little bit. Maybe, maybe what would and be good is to explain the responsibilities that the chair has. And... What were your responsibilities, Casey? Um, work with you to prepare an agenda um, to conduct a meeting uh, we would occasionally go up to the City Council and explain the recommendations we had um, and I told Chris that it appeared that that this committee's job was to uh, take a bullet at the City Council <laughs> and uh, we, would, we would evaluate issues and make recommendations and they could accept or deny those recommendations uh, depending on how they felt. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, the, the, the commission has assisted <coughs> in making presentations on master plans, on rate studies, um, financial models and things along those lines. We have not, we do not meet regularly with the city council. Um, but we do on an as-needed basis for any significant master plan approval <coughs> or any capital purchase, uh, or I should say any, uh, any uh, fees and rates changes that support our capital facilities plans. So. I'd, I'd move that uh, Jim be um, considered as chair of the Public Works Advisory Commission. Is there a second or a discussion? <laughs> Does he accept? <laughs> Does have a choice? <laughs> you, you have a vote. <laughs> Jim, would you like to say anything? Uh, no, I would rather not, but uh, <coughs> I'd be happy to serve whichever, so it's fine with me. So. Jim has some great experience and understands the workings of the commission and would do a great job. Second, second, third. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> he raised his hand, but he didn't say it. So I'm going to say that's not. Oh, yeah. So it's unanimous. OK. 
Okay. We'll turn the time over to you, Jim. Okay, great. I'll move you over here. <coughs> um, let's say, uh, as any, of course, all of you haven't had a chance to understand what the minutes are because you weren't here. Um, but do we have a motion to accept? I the have minutes? reviewed the minutes. Thank you, April, for that. And I move that we approve uh, both. Uh, well, we just had the April 19th meeting. Uh, approve the minutes of the April 19th meeting as uh, submitted by April. Is there a it, it might be helpful to state that uh, the minutes are simply a re an audio recording of the meeting and then April will uh, hyperlink to the discussion items so that uh, the minutes aren't a, 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 an extensive write-up of what we've done, rather links to minutes or to, to areas of the meeting that anybody from the public can click on and listen to the discussion for the duration. That we were stuck, that you said that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to dispute. Like, that, yeah. 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 That's yeah. not yeah. right. <laughs> 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 because it's just a report. We decided that YouTube provides a, a legal basis for minutes, so mm -hmm. all the city's minutes are posted onto YouTube. Okay. So I'll second it. Is there a motion? That, I mean, can we a vote to accept the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So I guess we'll turn the time over to Giles. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you all being here this morning. Before we get started, is anybody time correct? Like, I have to be out of here by 8 o'clock, or is it, does anybody have a strict schedule? Just, we need to let. Giles has a presentation here, but then we also want to go out and see the plant uh, to, so that you can actually see the things. So if nobody has a strict schedule, um, then we'll let, let Giles get into as much detail as you guys want. My, my, my presentation is really short and sweet this morning. But I do have one question for you. I got six bottles up on my table. Any idea where the water comes from? There is a tap water up there, yes. <coughs> Originally tap. I guess there, well, no. No? Oh, no. Let's see. Two of them would, would not be originally tap. Three, yeah, two of them. I would assume one of them is the discharge from the plant. One of them is the discharge from the plant. Any idea which one it would be? <laughs> That's my discharge. That's the water that we send out. It was five. If we send that out, where does it go? That's a good question. I'll get to that. Okay. I guess the middle one there is the tap. That one? Yeah. You know what? You're absolutely right. Put them together. I shake them up a little bit. They're hard to tell apart. That's the quality of the water this facility turns out. So I got I got four left. Is the dirty one the incoming? This one? Yeah. That is not the incoming. Not incoming. One that. of those is incoming. <clears throat> but that is not it. I'd either say that's from your your digester or perhaps that's from your oxidation ditch. That one's digester. Yeah. That's digested sludge. And j just for reference, that bottle right there is a clarifier. You can see the solids settle to the bottom, the water's on top. When it comes into a clarifier, it looks like that. So clarifier just drops it to the bottom. So that one is stabilized sludge out of the digesters. I got three left. The influence on the left bottle. That is the influence. That's wastewater. That's what it looks like. Two left. Care to guess? Primary clarifier. You don't have a primary clarifier here anymore. They do. They do. Four. Okay. One is Utah Lake. One is Provo River. <coughs> that one's Utah Lake. That one's Provo River. 
that one, that's my affluent, drops into that one, Utah Lake. A little bit of a difference. So that's the one. All the pollution that you can see in this one is actually now in that one. Okay. And it's not the pollution per se in this. This is all of the bugs that do all of the work out here. Okay. That's, that's what cleans the water for us. So we pull that out and we make that. That's biosolids. And all that is is this minus the water. Okay. We turn out 1,100 tons of that every year goes out to the farmers out in the um, south end of the valley. So <coughs> a little bit about Orem and the service area that we have. Um, we pick up all of Orem, we pick up all of Linden, we pick up a little bit of Vineyard. Uh, it's about 28 square miles. Population of about 110,000. <coughs> um, we also, at the water reclamation section, take care of the collection system. There's 300 plus miles of um, pipe in the ground, ranging from 4 inch up to 48 inch. <coughs> this is not an Orem City employee. This is a picture from another facility. Uh -huh. so, you know, that's not typical. Th th this, is, this is the slide when I, when I bring um, school age kids in. Th this is my plug to stay in school. <laughs> that that is a project that I actually worked on. That's a um, spiral lining of a 66 inch uh, sewer interceptor. Uh, that that line is live, uh, and they're lining it in Southern Salt Lake. The problem is, he makes about four times what I do. <laughs> he makes a lot of money to be in that sewer. But anyway. Um, We've got a lot of pipe in the ground. We know where every pipe is. Uh, we have a condition on every pipe. It's all in a GIS system, so we monitor that. We have eight lift stations on the system. They, they get the water down to us for treatment. Um, the ninth lift station is currently under construction, and it's down at the tail end of our plant. So we will have nine total lift stations um, by the end of the year. Um, the facility itself started operation in the late 50s. Uh, it's really not that old. So uh, our last major upgrade was in 2011. Uh, we put in our bioreactor number three. Um, again, there's only one water reclamation for all at once. Because of that, we operate 24-7, 365. The plant it never shuts down. It's always in operation. The water's always flowing through it. We are a secondary, or a primary and a secondary treatment system. Um, Late 2024, we're going to be a tertiary treatment system. We're putting in another process. Anybody have any idea what that one might be? It's going to help you out a lot. It's tertiary treatment. It's a water reuse system. We're going to do 5 million gallons of water reuse for irrigation. The really um, cool thing about this project, when we designed it, we looked at it, we put it in for dual purpose. Um, if you've listened to the news at all, you've heard about harmful algae blooms, cyanobacteria out on the lake. Part of the reason is because of nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus. This new system is going to be able to remove phosphorus. So when it's not doing water reuse, we're going to switch it over and do phosphorus reuse with it and blend that water back into our effluent, sending it out to the lake. So the facility will run all year long rather than being dormant for nine months out of the year. I just can I emphasize also in uh, prior to 1958, what plant where were you sending our waste to? Any ideas? Yeah, <laughs> Casey, the lake. There was a very small system here, screening essentially. <clears throat> then it went to the lake. Yep, the the lake was a treatment system. Yep. But, um, <laughs> I came from Salt Lake City. In fact, I still live in Salt Lake City. I worked at the treatment plant there. In the records back there, they have um, photographs of the Jordan River, and it was red because of all of the um, slaughterhouses along the river. That's where they discharged. <coughs> that, plant, that plant came online in 1966. The big one in Salt Lake City, Central Valley, that one came online in 84. So again, the plants are not that old. 
Um, this facility is designed uh, to process 13.5 million gallons a day. We're currently running at 8.5 million gallons a day. Um, like any system in a big heavy rain event, we will get inflow through our sewer um, lids. So we, we can take a peak hour flow of 21.6 million gallons a day. Uh, last year we treated um, 3.1 billion gallons of water. Uh, the plant itself <coughs> is a secondary treatment right now. Uh, designed to pull out BOD5, biochemical oxygen demand. Uh, it's got a five on there. It takes five days to run the test, which is a problem for operating a treatment plant. Uh, TSS, total suspended solids. That's the stuff you can actually see in the water. So again, anything you can see in there, those are the solids. We have to get those out. The other thing we pull is ammonia. Um, those are our limits right now. Uh, the newest one we have is phosphorus. We are on an interim limit. We're at 2.5 um, milligrams per liter. Uh, we, are, we need to be at one by the January 1st of next year. Uh, the water reuse is going to help us with that one. We pull out about 40,000, we can pull 40,000 pounds of BOD5 and about 40,000 pounds of TSS. Right now we're running right around 19,000 pounds a day and about 2,000 pounds of ammonia. This is our treatment plan. We're up here in the uh, admin collections building here. The water comes in. Uh, goes through our headworks, which has our screening systems in it, our grit removal systems. Um, the screening system pulls about 12 cubic yards of material out um, every week. That's a landfill material. Goes straight to the landfill. From there, uh, goes over to the primary clarifiers. There's four of them. Uh, originally, th these are 57, 1957 tanks. Yeah. There were two primary, two secondary. Two primary, two yeah, secondary. Right the top two were primaries, the bottom two were secondaries. Uh, in 84, they switched those so that now they're all primaries. Yeah. The problem with that, those two tanks are about a foot and a half lower. Yeah. So hydraulically, there's some, yeah. there's some issues there. So but we have, we have four of them. Um, they sit over here. The water uh, leaves these tanks about 50, 55% cleaner than it entered. From there, it goes over to our bioreactors. We have three of them. Uh, one and two are 1984. This is the newest one. It was purpose built for nitrogen and phosphorus removal. It was put in in 2011. Each of those tanks holds 3.7 million gallons of water. The water from these tanks um, hits one of the four secondary clarifiers. Uh, we have two big and deep ones down at this end and two um, shallower ones up that end. Those we'll put it in 84. This is a 90s. That's a 2011 tank. From there, the clean water, which is that one, goes over to disinfection. This building here. We use UV, um, UV light for disinfection rather than chlorine. That's a UV bulb. Uh, those sit in the water vertically. There are six modules uh, in the channels. There are two channels, three models in each channel. There are 32 bulbs in each channel. So that's what we use for disinfection. From there. So can I, can I comment on that? Please. We used to use chlorine, and uh, we had a chlorine contact basin, which was just east of that UV building. Right there. And we'd have to have, uh, I don't know how much chlorine on site typically to be able to make sure that. Uh, I think you kept um, about four. No, about 8,000 pounds. 8,000 pounds of, of chlorine. liquid chlorine. 8,000, when it's stored, it's, it, <coughs> it's in a, a liquid state and then it can expand into a gaseous state and it, it can expand dramatically and, and very fast. And we had to de define an area that was essentially a death zone. <laughs> and it was a large area for that much chlorine that we would have here. Um, so in the name of safety, not just for the uh, uh, the, uh, the surrounding area, but also for employees, we, we were trying to transition away from chlorine because of the amount of chlorine that we had here on site. In the event there was uh, a leak that had occurred, uh, we never had an instance like that. But this is a, a much more effective way 
It doesn't kill the pathogens, but it uh, makes them so that they cannot uh, be harmful. Can't reproduce. Can't reproduce. You're correct. You're correct. So once the water goes through disinfection, um, it's ready to go back to the environment. Uh, discharge point for the treatment plant is here, uh, Powell Slough, from there it's out to Utah Lake. The pollution that we pull out of the water, that's the solids. Uh, you can see that when it settled in, in my, my bottle there, that's what the clarifiers do. Those solids, um, we have to process. We use digesters, two-stage digestion at the facility. I think we're one of the only ones in Utah that does thermophilic and mesophilic. The difference is the temperature. Thermophilic runs at about 130 degrees F. Uh, mesophilic is about 98 degrees F. Once it's processed through the digesters, um, it comes down to our, two of our holding tanks here and then into bile solids. Bile solids has two presses in it that just removes the water from the um, solids. Um, from there, we store our bile solids out on drying beds. It sits out here. From there, we truck it out to the farmers. Uh, we will give that away, we will truck it to them, and they can use it for fertilizer. This is going to be the location of the new reuse facility. We're going to come off the tail end of UV, run water over to reuse. There will be a chlorine contact chamber on that where we will use sodium hypochlorite, which does not have the same safety issues as chlorine. It's just high strength bleach. Um, the reuse water is required to have chlorine in it. So we'll um, add the chlorine to send it off to Sleep to Reach Golf Course and up to the sports park up on Four South. And again, we're, we're pushing about five million gallons a day out of that. Go ahead. I comment on that too. So we, we bid the project for water reuse uh, back in about November, December, yes, and uh, we had four qualified, pre-qualified bidders. And then of those, uh, the low bid came, our, our estimate for the cost was around $9 million. It had to increase the <coughs> scope and magnitude to some degree, uh, but then, um, the bids came in very high. They came in at 18 million, double what our estimate was, uh, and then up to about 21 million dollars. And that shocked us, um, as it did many others who are in this industry and who are in construction right now. Material costs have gone through the roof. There are supply chain is issues. There are labor issues that have occurred. Um, and so we had to put a, the hard pause button on this project. Uh, and then we went after uh, ERA money, or excuse me, ARPA money uh, through the state and also through the county and uh, federal dollars through an earmark through our federal lobbyist. We are fortunate uh, to, to be able to share with you that we've received $7 million through the Utah County ARPA funds that they made available. Reed and I made a presentation to them. We submitted an application uh, with Giles support and others. Uh, letters of recommendations. Uh, they looked at this project very favorably from a water quality perspective, a water reuse perspective, um, to be able to, the ability to extend uh, the life of our water and use it for other purposes and to have a real uh, uh, nutrient beneficial or a, a, a real nutrient um, Benefit. benefit. That's good. I got confused there with beneficent. <laughs> benefit with Utah Lake. Um, so we also received three million dollars through the federal earmark uh, recently. So that's ten million that has covered that. So we're back on board right now. We're excited to say that this is going to be a great project to the benefit not just of Orem, but also for Linden and Vineyard, the lake itself, and the surrounding area. So. So did you have to rebid, or did you negotiate with the low bidder? We are negotiating, and we're starting the renegotiations with the with the bidder, with the low bid. Our our experience is since November, our bids have gone up twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah. That's we wish it were wide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's ugly. The nice the thing about thirty-five to forty. Yeah. 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 So the facility that's being put in um, has a capacity right now of 7.5 million gallons a day. Again, the reuse system, it needs 5 million gallons. We put in an extra filter for redundancy and for maintenance. Um, the filters that we're installing are expandable. We just need to put more cartridges into them. Uh, at build-out, it can take the full plant flow through the filters if we had to. 
So we're, we're, we're sizing for future phosphorus numbers that may be coming at us. So this facility should be able to take us to about a 0.3. So we're excited about that. Uh, we have 29 full-time positions out here of, of the 70 that Reed was talking about. Uh, I've got four groups, collections, uh, GIS, GPS, electrical and instrumentation, controls, and treatment. So again, the question was asked, where does the water go? Treatment plants up here. This is all pal slew here. Water comes down, drops into the pal lake. And all the kids say, well, your water is black. You know, it's crystal clear you're seeing the bottom of the lake. So that's where the water ends up. Again, 3.1 billion gallons into Utah Lake last year. With that, any questions? Short and sweet. So once you get the reclamation going, then that's all going to go to Sleepy Ridge and to the sports park, all that reclaimed water. The but, reused water? Yeah. A good portion of it will. It'll, it'll supply all of their needs. <clears throat> what we don't send there, we will send and discharge at a, at a higher quality. Uh, we're planning on also irrigating the park that's right across the street from us. And we're going to switch the irrigation system of the facility over to a reuse water rather than uh, potable. We do have one issue. We have to, we have a storage tank being put in as part of this. Um, at low flow, when I need the reuse water out on the golf course, we're only th um, flowing at about four MGD. So I'm shy about an MGD of water, million gallons. So we have a um, storage reservoir on here that will make up that difference. As flows increase to the facility, that reservoir will become less and less important for us. We'll have more water to, to discharge. One of the main reasons why we uh, we looked at this is it was a water issue, not a not a wastewater issue. We had a, se a severe uh, water pressure drop um, during irrigation season and during the actually during the um, during the night when the water is irrigating the golf course and the Sleepy Ridge Golf Course or and the uh, Lake Sports <coughs> Park, uh, we had pressure drops in this area and flow. Uh, restrictions as a result of that high demand. That water, as you know, is treated at the water um, uh, treatment plant where Casey um, operates up at the uh, northeast part of the town. The elevation is a lot higher and then we have to run that water about four and a half miles through the city to get down here to water the and irrigate the golf course. We don't have a secondary system in place, therefore all of our drinking water will <coughs> Drinking water is used not just for drinking, but also for uh, for toilets, for indoor uh, plumbing, as well as irrigating. And uh, this is going to help solve some of the pressure challenges that we have in this area. And it would strip uh, a lot of that water out and keep it in the northeast part of town where we need it to supply water for drinking purposes. So this is a multi-pronged approach. Um, we estimate also when this is at full build-up that this could actually provide enough water annually for about 30,000 people um, at full build out here because it is scalable and uh, and so we're excited about that <coughs> well shall we if there aren't are there any questions before we head out and have a little tour <coughs> one of the purposes of the tour is to show and share with you some of the needs that we have right now that we will be bringing forward to the city council in the near future, and that's where you come in uh, into play. We want to educate you on that. We want to answer any questions you might have regarding some of our capital facility needs at this facility. We are in the process of doing a master plan just for this plant and this site that should be wrapped up. Uh, what time? Uh, right towards the end of the year. End of this, just before budgets hit. Just okay. So the end of this year, and it includes some of the major things that it includes our screw presses for dewatering de and um, any struvite considerations, phosphorus considerations as well. Do you want to kind of describe some of those main projects that you have in mind? <sighs> screw presses, our belt presses are 1999 is when they were installed. Uh, they're at end of life and need to be um, replaced. So we've got a technology that we're working at. We're putting in the first screw press now. 
Uh, we have an engineer under contract doing the design for us. Uh, it's the intent to put in four more of these presses to replace our bell presses. Uh, we have electrical systems that are 1984 vintage and older that uh, are in need of some help. Um, if you're not aware, wastewater treatment plants are really hard on equipment. Uh, we have hydrogen sulfide. Uh, it just destroys it. So our lifespans are a little bit shorter than industry standards. Uh, we do our best to make sure that everything runs like it's supposed to, but the environment just eats things up. So we're going to be looking at some electrical upgrades. Uh, we've got some big pumps that we use to move water from the primary clarifiers up to the oxidation ditches. Those need to be resized and upsized for what we're trying to do. We need to get rid of some screw presses. They cause us some operational issues. We've got some mixers that need replacing. Um, we have an aeration system that needs to be replaced. So these are the things that we're looking at right now for um, major upgrades. Right now, the facility is designed for build out uh, of Orem. Uh, on the hydraulic side, the loading side, um, we're doing pretty good at right now too. Uh, ENR3 that was put in doubled our um, our loading capacity. It didn't increase our hydraulic, but it doubled our loading capacity. So we went from the 20,000, or we went up to 40,000, from about 20,000 pounds TSS and BOD up to 40. So we're, we're sitting really nice right there. Uh, those are the major upgrades that we're looking at right now. Uh, collection side, one of our big concerns is our, our big pipe that feeds the facility. It's a 48 inch pipe. We're gonna be looking at probably lining that. So um, right now we're spending about one and a half million dollars annually on lining of our collection system. Uh, it's working very well. Explain what lining is. Um, lining. So sewer pipes are in the ground, they're buried. There's two ways to repair them. One, you go out there and you dig it up. You close the road, you, you dig up the pipe and you lay a new pipe. There's a technology out that we're using. It's uh, in place lining where they come in with a sock, uh, slide it down the pipe that's in the ground, and cure it. It's um, a resin Im impregnated fiberglass sock. Once it's cured, it, it will give you another 100 years on that pipe. Uh, you don't have to dig the pipe up. It's all done from above ground. It's a great technology. We're doing, um, like I said, about $1.5 million a year right now in lining projects. So, really excited about that. Uh, like I said, our ninth lift station is under construction. Uh, it's down at the tail end of the plant. It'll be online towards the end of the year, I hope. Again, we're supply chain issues. So we're having some issues getting equipment. So that's what we've got so going right now. Chris, are you anticipating that rates are sufficient to fund the capital replacement projects Charles was talking about? Or are you I thinking know. you have to go out to bond? Well, we haven't seen the, the plan yet take place, but we anticipate that we will have to uh, increase our rates. <coughs> to what extent, I'm not sure. To support, uh, and, and the time frame and the scheduling of the, the replacements is not known either. So I can't really fully answer that question. I don't anticipate having to bond, at least in the near future. And so you think the council has an appetite to increase sewer rates? They have, they have uh, been doing that, yeah. Okay. But uh, we will see, we will see. We have a new council. We have uh, we have uh, three or four new members of our city council. Well, three new <coughs> ones. That Dave, Dave Spencer came on uh, recently, uh, so he's not new. And then uh, so we have uh, Lene Millet, Terry Peterson, and uh, Mayor Young that are new on the council. Mm -hmm. And Jeff. Well, Jeff isn't new this go round, but but he is. Yeah, he's on the council as well as Debbie uh, and uh, Tom McDonald. Um, but uh, the newer members haven't uh, haven't really had to face uh, rate increases yet. Um, so I would I would anticipate some resistance. Uh, but the part of our our uh, objective though is to ed educate them on any needs that we have. 
Public Works, you know, we're, we're, we're not very glamorous, but we provide the absolute needs of the, commu uh, the community, meaning drinking water, wastewater, uh, treatment processes. We're also highly regulated for stormwater, sewer, and water, or, and uh, water, drinking water. And so we have to meet the, the standards that are presented to us, and to meet some of the rigorous standards requires that we have capital improvements, and that costs money. Anything that costs $100 yesterday might cost $200 today. So, um, you know, there may be a bond necessary, Casey, but uh, we, I don't have a real good feel for what we're looking at down here yet. Can I interrupt this meeting for a second? Is there any chance we could get a key to the gate that's over by the dumpster for the golf course? We would like to take a sand truck through there and make a... Yeah, I can help you with that. Give me one second. <laughs> ask a yeah, yeah. Please. I'll, I'll be right out and help you. Just give me a second. Okay, thank you. Who owns the water? Who owns the water? Yeah, is a complicated <clears throat> question. Well, uh, water, yeah, water, water rights. Water rights. So, Orem City owns water rights, as does the Metropolitan Water District of Orem. The Metropolitan Water District of Orem, uh, I, I sit on that board, and and they they acquire water rights, okay? Through they purchase them. They purchase water rights, mm -hmm. and that's the ability to use water and put it to beneficial use. We purchased, uh, to, we purchased them long ago. Long ago? Long ago? Right, yeah. I, I got it. And our forefathers uh, were very stuck uh, aggressive about purchasing water rights and preparing uh, for future, yeah. for today, and so forth. In fact, uh, uh, the Provo well, River Project, for example, which is the Deer Creek Reservoir, yeah, and some conveyances of the Murdoch Canal and the water that uh, travels through the county and so forth, the vision of that Thanks, occurred man. during the Great Depression. And so they were looking at uh, spending millions and millions of dollars on a project that they would not benefit from. So the old adage is, we drink water from wells we didn't dig. Um, uh, and that, I don't know if Casey wants to add anything to that, but in his line of business, they acquire water rights as well. So communities acquire water rights, water districts acquire water rights. We have to put it to beneficial use and then put it back into uh, the downstream uh, system. It's called the return flow back into the system. The only thing that happened. Well, Orem's been very progressive, and you have a very resilient supply because you have both surface treated water, um, and then you have wells. And most communities are not as fortunate as Orem. They have done a great job. So just just briefly, so we have 60% of our drinking water comes from uh, Deer Creek and Jordanelle, and then uh, Casey and his. Uh, staff, uh, they treat that water and put it into our system. Uh, about 25% of our drinking water comes from deep wells, and then the other 15, remaining 15% comes from springs. We have two springs in the mountains. One is the Alta Spring, the other one is the, the Canyon Spring. And at some point, we will give you tours of those facilities in the future, too. Just, just so you're aware, right now we have approval from the state of Utah to to reuse 9,600 acre feet of water annually. So an acre foot of water is about uh, nine inches of water across uh, a football field. It's that deep, it's that, it's that quantity of water. In the city of Orem, and that's about 325,000 gallons of water. In the city of Orem, uh, we, we produce around eight billion gallons of water a year. Giles treats three billion gallons. You might ask, where's the five billion go? Well, the majority of that goes onto your grass, onto your land. And that's another aspect of the Public Works Advisory Commission that we would like to address with you uh, in the near future as well, is water conservation, tied to xeriscaping, landscaping, wise water use, and so forth. Um, so of the three billion gallons of water that we use inside of our homes, and that is conveyed here, uh, of the eight billion that's treated, three comes here and five goes out into the, into the yards. You're saying that in comparison, Orem is very, very aggressive with other cities as far as 
conservation, acquisition, and so forth of, I, wa of water. I think we need to become water more. Rights. <laughs> well, water. You have water rights and water conservation. They're they're related, <laughs> but they're, they're not the same thing. So water rights is our our water sources that we have for our drinking water and for other uses. And then conservation wise. Last year, for example, <coughs> our peak day historically for one day is around 60 million gallons of drinking water that was produced. And uh, last year, during the, the drought that we have, well, the conditions of the drought that we have right now, and um, the month of June, we had multiple days in the hundreds. Our peak day was in June of last year, and it was only around 42, 43 million gallons in one day. Our overall reduction last year over our typical year was around 18 percent. And it was all voluntary. We didn't, we didn't require uh, mandates, um, but we, we had a pretty good public uh, education campaign that was out there tied with the state of Utah, uh, central Utah water. You've heard the slogan, uh, slow, the, uh, slow the flow, save H2O. Well, that comes from Casey's group. Uh, in, in central Utah, um, and we we are very closely uh, teamed up on those efforts to conserve. Uh, but voluntarily, uh, the city and community saved around 18 percent of what we typically would have used, and it was one of the driest years we've had. So I think uh, credit goes to uh, those people who are conservation minded. And we'll continue to do that. You've noticed probably several yards in the community that aren't green right now. And there's a lot of people that aren't using as much water. It's a double-edged sword because uh, the revenue that we generate comes from producing and selling the water. So we're telling people not to use the product that we're providing them. And, uh, and that's used to generate the revenue. So we have to come up with a multi-pronged approach on, on generating water revenues. To add on to you to your question, <clears throat> you said Orem's being progressive with obtaining water rights. We were really progressive years ago. We have it. Uh, water rights to purchase them, it's like mining gold. It's it's not they're not as plentiful. You, you have to find, have a willing seller, and they continue to grow in value. We're willing to buy water rights, as is Casey. He's a competitor of ours. He's got deeper pockets than we do, unfortunately. But uh, but we but we as a city, we're healthy. We have we have. If the water's there, it belongs, it more than likely belongs to Orem. Other communities which weren't as, as progressive back in the day, because they were so small, uh, they're, they don't sit in as good of a position as we do in a drought situation. Yeah. We have a competitive partner relationship. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we, more, it's more partner. We rarely compete against Orem and water rights. I can't remember the last time we competed against Orem. Right, yeah, so I mean, you're acquiring Provo Bench, yeah. and, and, <coughs> and, and, and we are too a little bit, but, yeah. but primarily we, we work together. Okay. Is the uh, future reuse water satellite, most of that's going to go to the uh, golf course, and the, it will not come to residences? If, if the first residences that I would anticipate that would go to would be in the southwest Warren area. This plan right now does not consider that, but it, it is uh, uh, scalable, and uh, it's anticipated that it will go to residents someday, at well, least on the west side of the sound town. Quick question, is the uh, fertilizer that we send to farmers, is that available for the public if they wanted to use it? That is not at this time. It is a class B product, so it has to go on controlled sites. Uh, the facility is set up to do class A biosolids if we so choose. Right now, we don't need to, so we are only running in Class B. So, no, it's not available to the general public. But, but Class A could be used yes. if we produce that. And there was an attempt to do some composting down here to produce Class A. We tried it for some time. Um, I don't know. Maybe you know a little bit more about that, because uh, I wasn't down here at the time. How successful that was? It, um, it was successful at producing it, but it was smelly. And then uh, it's, it's a... It's a it's a stinky process, and as the development occurred down here, uh, we had to shut it down. Uh, when it comes to uh, s providing it to the public, 
it gets really difficult to manage when you get people coming down that just want to pick up truckload. We need to get rid of it by the semi truckload. So there's some uh, there's some issues where, where where that comes into place. It's easier to get rid of it to farmers who need a a lot of it rather than having a dozen people come down who will make just a small dent into it. But that said, it's not it's not Class A, so we can't give it to them anyway. The North Point Point uh, Waste that's a different uh, group. We don't work with the North Point Waste. That's separate altogether. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's are you talking about TSSD or North? No, no, more just the transfer North station. Point, uh, transfer. The transfer station. Garbage. Yeah. Well, it's we, a different uh, organization. It is. Under this area. That's correct. We used we used to coordinate through North Point. That's a transfer station, and we would just we we would take uh, tons of of biosolids or or this waste <clears throat> to dump sites and just put it in the ground without treating it. Uh, well, we would treat it to class B even, or less, but we would just waste it. And we would spend $250,000 annually to be able to do that. But today, we spend $0 sending it to TSSD, which is the transfer station. They would take it to the dump sites. Today, we take 100% of it and land apply it and put it to beneficial use on land for fertilizer. So I think we're ready for the tour. Are we going to con conclude the agenda oh, then? And yeah, we probably should do that here because we're going to be out in the field right now. Yeah. Is there any other business that we need to bring up today? I, I just would assume that Todd will remain as the vice chair. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. And then is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second? A second. All in agreement, say aye. All right. Aye. Okay. Does 7 o'clock work for everybody uh, typically? Or is we're open to other times? This is how, what we've done typically to accommodate work schedules and so forth. Yeah, works great for me. Works great, okay. Please provide feedback and let us know. Again, thank you for so readily volunteering. We have a great group, a great mix of background, I believe. So let's go ahead and go out, Giles, if you want to lead us. So you've lived it off for some time and then